I decided to buy Stranger Things Darkness from the Edge of Time. <laughs> This novel is a spin-off of the Stranger Things Netflix series and it focuses on James Jim Hopper when he was in New York as a police detective at the NYPD. Most of the story takes place in 1977 around the springtime and it does cut back and forth to 1984. Uh, this is a story that Jim Hopper tells at 11 shortly after Stranger Things season 2 where they're at his cabin and it's uh, Boxing Day, it's Christmas time. So uh, it's all snowed in around the cabin and people are advised not to go out due to the hazardous weather. And Jim Hopper realises that uh, Eleven wants to get to know him. He knows an awful lot about her but she doesn't necessarily know an awful lot about him. So uh, season two did show Eleven going through the boxes in Jim's basement under the house. Um, a couple of folders, one of them said New York, the other said Vietnam, and she brings like the New York folder to him and asks him, you know, to tell the story of what that's about, you know, what was he doing in New York, and he uses that opportunity to talk to her about his past, the kind of type of life that he had, you know, who he was, and it's a way of them to, yeah, to, for her to get to know who he was and what he's all about, you know, she just sees him as this, you know, father figure and she doesn't really know much about him. Where he actually, um, he's kind of weary to tell her this story about himself because it's a dark past that he has. Um, I personally think the show was darker than the book. Uh, so the case that Jim Hopper ha had been assigned to was there was a satanic cult going around New York committing murders. And Jim Hopper and his partner, Detective Rosario, Delgado were piecing it together. The gang is called the Vipers and basically what's happened is that this deluded madman of a leader has managed to merge all of the New York City gangs into one and brainwash them that uh, the day of the serpent is coming, that the devil is coming down, he's their master and he's sitting on the throne of flames and it's basically his way of trying to take over New York and rule it for his own twisted, deluded purposes. Hopper goes undercover in this uh, organization and he's able to learn more about it, but not an awful lot. The leader is very secretive and quite cautious about who he tells his plans to. And it's more, uh, the case does get taken off of Hopper and his partner and the FBI took over, the Federal Investigation Bureau, because uh, another FBI agent that was assigned to the case gets killed in one of the ritual murders. So the FBI start looking into uh, Jim Hopper and his partner break the rules and delve into the case anyway when they were ordered not to. And it turned out good for them that they did ignore those orders. So because Jim got himself in so deep with the case, uh, this FBI agent is like threatening him and says, you know, you've got this far. If you don't do what we say, you'll never see your wife and daughter again. We'll make their lives hell. And as much as Jim Hopper wants to solve the case, now he definitely has to solve the case, otherwise, you know, their lives are, are over, all of them, and he'll probably be in prison for the rest of his life. So uh, he makes an agreement, and he gets in, and the, th the thing about this novel is that I was looking to learn more about Jim Hopper. You do learn more about him, he's still very much the same character that you saw in the show, and whenever you read his lines in the book, I I would just hear David Harbour's voice saying those lines and the same whenever Eleven speaks in the book I heard Millie Bobby Brown's voice in my own head you know that's how invested I am with the characters and that's how good of a job those actors did bringing those characters to life you know whenever you read a book that doesn't have a TV show or anything or you read a book before you watch a TV show or a film you know you have your own imagination and interpretation of, of what they look and sound like but whenever you watch a film or a TV show and then you read a book based on it, <coughs> you see them, you, 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 those characters, you see them as you saw them, how they were portrayed to you on screen. I will say, it, it was a fun read, um, I couldn't put the book down when I picked it up and started reading it, I got the first half of it, you know, it was just, it was uh, captivating, it really was. Um, 
The second half of it kind of dragged a bit, but I was determined to see it through because I was invested. I wanted to see um, Jim's, Jim Hopper's story all the way through. Um, he, he's living with his wife and his daughter in an apartment, and <laughs> it's really, it is sad because um, he had it all. You know, he was happily married, he had a family, he had a good job, even though New York City was going through a depression at the time. But um, it's sad because whenever you've watched the show, you know that, shut up, you know this isn't going to last. You know it's all going to blow over for him, he's going to lose what he has. Especially the last page of the book, where I'll not say what happens, it's nothing major, but it's like it basically shows you know that he's happy where he is and he's got what he wants and everything's over. But those who have watched the show know that this is like really the beginning. The story in this show has very little to do with Hawkins and the upside down and the demogorgons. They're not even the like Hawkins is referenced here and there, um, but there's nothing to do with the lab or the upside down. Uh, there's none of that there. This really is um, just your typical crime mystery or mystery crime novel of a police detective. This could have been about any detective. The only difference is it's set in the world of Stranger Things and it's about Jim Hopper. It just goes into Jim Hopper's past. This is his story. This is his character and that's all there really is to it. I would like for them to have gone deeper into this and um, it's just mostly the focus is him solving a case and trying to catch the guys that are behind it. That's mainly what this book focuses on. Not a bad book. I think it could have been a lot better. I did enjoy it. Um, Adam Christopher is the author of this novel. And fuck, you know. I would like for the book to have touched more on his story in Vietnam because he kept on going back in the back of his head, you know, that he did things in Vietnam, and it never really tells you what he, what exactly he did. It's alluded to by, you know, the leader of the cult because he was in the Vietnam War as well, but it doesn't necessarily clarify that Jim Hopper done those exact same things. It's kind of messed up what the cult leader, cult leader had to do um, in Vietnam, but um, I'd say probably just the war itself, you know, tore Jim Hopper apart, but he found himself again. He basically is a man looking for a purpose, you know, to protect and serve as a New York City NYPD, as a New York City police detective. That's basically what he's doing. That's just a small portion of his life, you know. I would love, uh, they really should make more novels on Jim Hopper especially. You know, it'd be great to see what he was like, what happened in Vietnam, you know, because it, it reveals that after he left school, he volunteered, shut up. He volunteered for Vietnam and basically uh, <coughs> it went from there and he landed himself as a police officer afterwards because he couldn't really escape that part of himself to protect and serve. I reckon what they'll probably do is after season 4 Stranger Things comes out what they'll probably end up doing is bringing another novel of Jim Hopper and they'll probably explore what he was doing at the Russian prison camp. You know. That being said, um, what's interesting is that season four, it's supposed to, it's supposed to explore more of Jim Hopper's past. So there's a good possibility that season four might actually go into this, might tap into it, and explore things that uh, have already been mentioned in this book. It could explore things that uh, have not been mentioned in this book because if whenever Jim Hopper told the story at eleven, he did censor. He really censored a lot of it. So there's details in here that happened. Uh, but he left like maybe some graphic grisly parts of it out. He said there was a lot of deaths in the that story, and I don't think there was an awful lot of deaths towards the end of the book. You know, if Anthony's partner, I was expecting Delgado to be killed off because he tells out at the start, you know, that she was with the FBI agent, they're doing well with each other. You know, she's working in Washington, and I thought, okay, that has to be a lie. And then I felt that later on in the book he might turn around and say, yeah, she'd actually end up dead, but he probably didn't intend to get that far in a story with Eleven because he was holding back. He didn't want to frighten her or give her nightmares, especially after her traumatic experience in the Hawkins lab. It's not one of those books that opened my mind. You know whenever you're reading the book, you become a ghost in the book and it helps you to, what's the word, blow your mind and switches your brain on. It's more or less, you know, gets you thinking. Well, that, that book didn't do that for me. 
when I read a book, that's what I like to have. I like to enjoy the book, the story, the character, and have my mind open and make me look at things from another perspective. That book, I think, was more targeted for teenagers. There is swear words like shit in it, but there's no swear words like fuck. There's none of that. I think uh, that's what the book's implying that Jim and other characters say whenever they go, oh, Jim swore, oh, Degaldo swore. You know, there's none of that there. I don't even know if they said fuck on the street or things show. I don't think they have. I said every other word bar that. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see where season four goes. Because it's meant to show us a lot more of Hopper that we haven't seen before. I'd say a lot of it would be having to do with what he was forced to do at the prison camp in Russia. Thought there was another wasp in here, but there's not. Uh, would I recommend this here book? I wouldn't highly recommend this book, but you know. If you want to know more about Jim Hopper, a bit about his, about his past, his origins, I mean, it's worth reading, but it's not really worth going out of your way to read. You know, there's nothing really... It doesn't, like, break open a new wall or a new dimension to the story. It's really... It's kind of like reading the biography of Jim Hopper, even though it's not written as a biography, but it's more or less just telling you... It opens the window and shows you, yep, this is who he was, this is what he was doing. He's still very much the same guy, you know, he's very, he's ruthless and cunning. Um, but he's slightly more laid back, you know, whereas in the show he's more, uh, what's the word, he's more assertive. He's assertive in this book as well, but not nearly as assertive as he is in the show. He's not as jaded, because uh, on the show he had, he had his divorce, he lost his daughter, he's a lot more pissed off. Whereas he's not really like that as much in this book, unless he's provoked by, you know, the Vipers or, or his partners. You know, for the most part, he's, he's happy. This is a gym in a good mood, actually. <clears throat> I'm using a paper straw to remember it, to keep my place in the book. That's uh, oh, This is actually the first novel uh, written by Stranger Things, and this one here is the second one in sequence. Uh, I went for this one because I. I'm more invested in the character of Jim Hopper. I find Jim Hopper, you know, relatable. Not just because he's a man, but, you know, personality-wise, him and I are actually very similar. There's things that he says and does in the show that <coughs> I've done myself. You know, like, comes to... There's just his, his attitude in general. Like, his snarkiness. And, you know, the way that he gets up in the morning now. I've never actually brushed my teeth and drank alcohol afterwards. I don't think I've done that there. Because if I was drinking in the morning, I wouldn't have brushed my teeth. <laughs> you know, and wouldn't occur to me. Uh, and I, personally, the idea of, you know, brushing your teeth and then having toothpaste in your mouth and drinking alcohol and then swallowing that there. Go, no, thank you. I don't think that would be dying very well. I really like the cover on this. You know, it's a nice sweet background of uh, New York and... World Trade Center is their uh, Empire State Building or the Chrysler Building. I get them mixed up, I'm not sure. Or maybe they're both the same. That shows you how much I know about New York. Um, and it's a nice, I, like, I love that they put, they put David Harbour on it and then there's Millie Bobby Brown there, which has her season two look. And the back of it, um, that's nice, you know, nice retexture, nice color of it, and has like a, a photograph there in New York City in 1977. And then there's the spine of it there, you know. And, It was 8 I bought it off Amazon, and I also bought this off Amazon as well, and I've lost my place. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, it's somewhere here, but you know what, I'm actually not that. I'm only like three or four pages in another, so I'll be able to find it again, no problem. Um, one thing I want to say, the new villain of season four that shows that they're a monster, I wonder, is that Jim Hopper? Tell me I'm wrong. I'm going to put this out there now. I don't know if anybody else has said this here, but it kind of looks like David Harbour. You know, the fact that it's bald as well. You know, is this what Jim Hopper turns into? You know, because season four is meant to blow our minds. You know, it's meant to be the best season so far. It's meant to be the longest season too. Like, each episode is supposed to be, like, feature length. You know, like, almost an hour and a half or 19 minutes long. Longer than all the other episodes of the show. So I'm really looking forward to that there. And after I read this yes after I read this here as I've already done what I'm saying is after I read this one I'll review it as well this one didn't get much of a good review uh, I'm reading this one because I want to know more about Martin Brenner 
Uh, I know it focuses, I think it focuses more on Terry, Terry Ivis, uh, Eleven's mum. So uh, I'm not talking much about this one here because I made this video for this book and I don't want to overshadow this one here. So yeah, I, I thought it was alright. It left me wanting more. I wanted more of the story. You know, there's there so much more this book could have gone into. You know, it could have went deeper in the Jim Hopper, but it didn't. It didn't really give us that. It just focuses on him and the kids. You know, it, it should have delved more into his personality uh, and should have got more background on him, even though it is a background story. But I felt that there were key parts missing. And the fact that it wasn't as dark as the show, even though it is still dark, you know, I kind of felt, you know, this was a missed opportunity to explore a new side them and you know maybe bring up some revelations about them you know, but suppose that they want to keep that for the show for whatever season four has coming because you know it's more it's just that they open the door and you, you more or less just get a peep that's what i would say i know i said earlier open the window but it's more you get a peep into who he was and what he was doing it's not like a full-blown backstory of um from birth to 1977 it's nothing like that there it's mostly just him in 1977 with some references to his childhood. You know, nothing about his parents, but you know, there's like one reference to whenever he was at school, last day of school. You know, and all he did was he just talks about you know, how the teachers uh, got the pupils to move the tables and chairs up against the wall uh, during the summer break so that the cleaners would come in. That's like one reference to there. You know, so hopefully, if they make another Stranger Things novel with Jim Hopper, it, I hope it's about you know either Vietnam. Or, and maybe another police case, or it'll probably be about him and his time in the Russian prison camp. But I definitely would like to have more. Uh, they really should make like a trilogy for Jim Hopper. There's more story to be told, but there really is. I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Bye bye. Mouth breathers.